In this video, we're going to take a look at resources in Microsoft Project. Adding resources to a project gives us a lot of benefits. One is we can take a look at over-allocated resources if it's a human resource. The other thing is we can take a look at costs for things like materials that are used as we're working on a project. So I have here a project that I created in a prior video and I embellished a bit with some more tasks. Uh, now I want to add some resources. So I'm going to choose Assign Resources. And note that I can put in a resource name here. Uh, in this case, I chose my name. Now, a little trick here. There's not a lot of info on this screen, but if I double click, uh, we come over to Resource Information. And we can see a whole lot more uh, details that we can add. First of all, what type of resource is this? Well, it's a work resource. Uh, which is effectively a human resource, as opposed to a material resource, which is something that's consumed in producing a good, or simply a cost, which would be, you know, sending people out to a conference or something like that, that's not necessarily uh, directly proportional to the amount of goods created. So we have resource name. I can put an email, addre email address. I could uh, log on with a Microsoft account, for instance. And uh, now down here we have my availability, but over here we have cost. So we'll say, okay, what's my rate? Let's say 120 an hour for normal work. And then overtime rate, say is 160 an hour. <clears throat> and okay, so that's me. Now let's go ahead and add Pamela Rocky and Kaz Dolowitz. And for each of these, I can go in, I can set their rate as well. We'll say Pam is 130 for standard and 160 over time. And let's say Kaz Dolowitz is maybe 100 standard and 150 over time. And okay. Now we can assign these resources to a task. Uh, so if I uh, choose resource names here, I can simply pick them from a dropdown and say, let's say uh, Brandon's on this one. And let's say Brandon is also on this one. And we'll say this one is Pamela. And then down here we'll say, okay, this is Kaz. And uh, design ERD, maybe that takes several people. So we'll say that takes everybody. And I'm going to go ahead and fill out resources. Uh, for the. I'll pause the video for a moment and fill out resources on the rest of these. Now, notice a few things. First of all, when I assign resources to each of these work units, we see the resource name here over to the right. Now, when I designed this project, I had all of these big summary tasks starting effectively the first day. But now we're going to see that's not practical because we have some resources who are bottlenecked or some resources who are over allocated. Take a look over here on the left and you'll see that we have uh, kind of a burgundy colored person and what that indicates is that the resource is over allocated or in other words we're asking for more than a standard work week for that person so maybe we have a 40 hour work week defined and we currently have this person allocated to 120 hours so in this case we can do resource leveling and this is something that i mentioned in a previous uh, presentation but effectively, there are two things we can do. One is resource leveling, where we adjust the dates and allocate resources to only their working hours. Another is resource smoothing, uh, where we uh, see how we can change things within the project, maybe by changing resources or doing things in parallel, uh, and, and try to have minimal impact on that final date. So resource leveling... Uh, just a quick animation. This is a common occurrence where we have three developers working on something. Each of those items requires two days of quality. And so we see when each task is completed, it wants to go to the quality lane, but the problem is we have too much going in at once and they end up overlapping. 
So what we have to do then is uh, level that QE resource that we have to whatever the normal work week is, we'll say 40 hours, and then extend the deadline by that point. A neat thing is that Project will do a lot of this for us automatically. Now, first of all, let's see who is over-allocated. We can see the indications here, uh, but we can also go to a report on resources and say over-allocated resources, and we can see hours per resource, and then we can also see the over-allocation as time passes, so we can get an idea of when, within our calendar, this resource is over-allocated. Let's run back to our Gantt chart now, and I'm going to go to Resource. Now, take a look at some of these dates we have here, specifically the finish dates, like Foundation, we have 523, Create Specimen API, we have 613, Create Android Application, 529. Uh, what I can do is I can level an individual resource with Level Resource, or I can say Level All. Let me try to give a little view over here as best as I can. And take just a mental screen capture of what you see over here on the right, the uh, Gantt chart view. Uh, the other thing is, because this is a video, guess what? You can always rewind and see where we were. But watch what happens when I say level all. Notice that a lot of these tasks have now moved. Because it's trying to say, okay, uh, I know I have an over-allocated resource. And that did pose some challenges on our schedule. We see create GitHub repository now says, ah, I can't get done in time. Uh, so we might want to go back and, and say, okay, uh, let's auto allocate these tasks. I choose auto schedule, take a look at what's going to happen right here and right here and also the uh, finish date. Uh, so we'll say auto schedule and notice that it makes this work for us, but in doing so, it does adjust the finish date. Now we go down to these other tasks and you see that uh, this is kind of interesting. We have Brandon starting on this task, and then Brandon is needed up here, and then Brandon works on this task, and several others. So you see what it did is it effectively shuffled things around to make sure that I'm not working more than 40 hours in a week. But in doing so, it did create some gaps uh, in our predecessor and successor relationship that we didn't have before because it's looking for the best way to allocate me. Um, incidentally, it looks like uh, since I stretched out this foundation task, I'm now over-allocated again, so I might need to go back and, and resequence that a little bit. So, nice thing is, you know, you can always save a project, try this level resource, and then go back to your save point if you don't like it, uh, if you don't like the results. Of course, the other option is to... Uh, switch resources around a little bit or even add more resources. Uh, in this case, because I wanted to demonstrate resource leveling, I assigned myself to a lot of these tasks. But what I might do uh, if I don't have the ability to change the project timeline, what I might do instead is say, okay, let me take a look at my over allocated resource report. Let me see when there is an over allocation and then I will see if I can maybe borrow somebody for that time, or I can send that work off to another team to be done. So several things we can do to manage resources and uh, over allocation of resource. When you're early in planning and when you're executing the project, this is going to be very important information uh, because uh, if you have an over allocated resource and something slows down with that person, or maybe that person quits or gets transferred, or tasks just take longer than you think, uh, that's a major risk that we need to look out for. And by doing this resource uh, over allocation report, we can get ahead of that risk and we can look at ways to mitigate it before it becomes a problem. So as always, I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.